Adam Jones was one of the artists that worked here from, I believe, the years 1989 to about 92. And I met Adam through another friend named Rick Lazzarini. And Adam was an effects artist at the time and a sculptor and uh, had, a, had a really kind of fun and brilliant take on, on his sculpting and mold making techniques. And so he was here for Edward Scissorhands, Terminator 2, and the first Jurassic Park. During, the, during those, those years, uh, I do remember that Adam was very interested in music. And I remember very distinctly him going through a phase where he was feeling as though he had the urge to create and form a band. And he would come in with little cassette tapes and go, listen to this, what do you think of this? And so he would kind of pick our brains or we would kind of like get responses to, to what we thought was, was rather kind of cool sounding. And, and then there was one period of time where he, he actually said, look, I, I want to go off and, and start this band. Because, because what, what should I do? I mean, I don't want to leave here. I'm like, what are you, crazy? What, what could be the worst thing that could happen? You could, you could go and try to, to do it, and if it didn't work out, you've got this as a career to, to fall back on. But it, you have to take the opportunity or the moment. You have to try it. You have to try. And um, that's exactly what he did. And, and he got this thing going and then we knew that we would go to like small little gigs around town like he would say like I'm playing here and playing there and they'd be like cramped little places but you saw like the response from people and I was like I think this is gonna turn out well for Mr. Jones. So the connection I would still hear from Adam from time to time would, would be for uh, techniques or, or sometimes requesting artists help to make the videos and they were definitely you could tell absolute sort of uh, works of, of passion and completely like extremely ambitious so uh, in other words doing stop motion doing makeup effects um, techniques for this or that so he would Generally what would happen is, is if he had a, a technical problem, he would call me up and ask me what he, I thought could be uh, accomplished and I would, I would try to help out in that way. But I would, I would always find it extremely fascinating because it was another facet, it was a different world because I was stuck in feature films and uh, you know, uh, television films or commercials and it's, that's its own thing and it's, and it's, very, it's very exciting in its own right. But, to know that there was a group of artists that that are really talented making their own thing there's like putting it together and, and and making these fantastic films and him actually directing them for the most part I thought that was really great so I would do whatever I could and I know a lot of artists that were here and and some of them that are still here would do little side projects to help complete things you know sculpt models or make um, armature or set pieces or help do makeups and things like that. And there are other people outside of here that, that do similar work, like I think Chet Zar is, a, is an effects guy as well. And he kind of really helped, I know he helped uh, Tool a lot, you know. My involvement in this project was uh, through Adam Jones, and uh, he called me to work on this video. We've been working together for 10 years now, maybe. It's back, uh, back on Stinkfist, I think, was the first time we worked together. And I came in and just helped out doing a small effect, and then I headed up the makeup effects crews for the following, I think, three or four videos. <laughs> been a long time but um, I always enjoy working on these videos enjoy working with Adam because it's it's fun it's creative creatively fulfilling and uh, I don't get that too much 
working for, on other productions, they usually suck. 90% of them, but the tool videos are always great creative fun. Well, I met Adam at a makeup effects studio. We were working on something like 1991, maybe, Dark Man or Swamp Thing or something. And um, we just hit it off right away. So we have similar tastes. I think there's kind of a makeup effects aesthetic in a way, like a geek factor. <laughs> People that are fans of genre type movies and stuff. And um, and it goes from bad to, I think, cool. And <laughs> I think we both have the cool, you know, the cool feel. Um, at least we both agree on, you know, what's cool and, and what kind of monsters are cool and stuff. And But we both, I think, are interested in similar fine art as well, like surrealism and, and uh, you know, visionary psychedelic art. And um, we just hit it off really well together. And uh, we even jammed a couple times before he formed Tool. And um, yeah, it was a bit, I kind of lost contact with him for years and then we sort of, like I said before, hooked back up around Stink Fist, he called me and then have been working together ever since. Um, I don't know, we just have a similar aesthetic. Seems we get together and things click right away. But you don't get with a lot of uh, directors or artists, I don't know, we just, artistically, it just, it's kind of instantaneous. As soon as we sit down together, we both start getting really good ideas and bouncing them back and forth off each other. It's really fun, so. Yeah, in this video I did uh, some character design, creature design, environment design, just general concept artwork. I met Adam and uh, Camilla at an art exhibition in uh, Santa Monica back in 1999 and Adam was interested in my artwork and um, I love the music of Tool and Adam suggested the possibility of working together on the lateralis art. And uh, since it was so in alignment with the anatomical kind of approach that I have to the artwork, it was just a perfect, uh, you know, marriage of uh, ideas. The first video I started working on was Prison Sex, the second video off of the, the Undertow record. And, uh, uh, you know, I, I, was, I took on quite a bit of work, you know, quite a bit, quite a bit of the art uh, on that video, but I guess, that's, what is it, five years passed after Undertow when the, the the release of Anima, and then uh, you know I was still living in Seattle, Seattle, and Adam asked me to come down and help uh, produce the the packaging for Anima and the video. The first video was for Stink Fist, and I came down and you know it took probably like six months to finish, but you know the progression of and the ideas and the the just the the collaborative effort between this confederacy of artists that we assembled really kind of set a precedent for the neck you know the fought the videos to come all the way up till to vicarious actually you know we we use a lot of the same team a lot of the same people um, and I said I, I share the the producing with my partner Robin, Robin Breen. Uh, her strengths are my weaknesses and vice versa. Let's see, working with Adam is always an amazing experience for me through the years. I've, I've worked on 
the last five tool videos and starting around Stinkfest. Um, and every single time he always says, you know, this time I want to take it further than the last one and just push it and do something amazing. And he really, really does. And I think that on this project in particular, it was, um, you know, creating a completely all CGI video was taking it way further than anything we've ever done together. Uh, you know, we don't have the luxury with this one of shooting and shooting live action and even on stop motion of shooting several different takes, several different ideas or different camera angles. We really had to be locked in about the ideas and you know the cut, everything, which was a totally different process. But at the same time, it was interesting because he could take any ideas that he's had way further than uh, he's been able to before because in a CGI world, Pretty much anything is possible, which is, is the great thing about it. Um, and along with Alex Gray, uh, that ended up being an incredible process. And I think also working with Alex Gray has been uh, very exciting. He is kind of like a, has this childlike enthusiasm to be around, but extremely articulate, extremely artistic, and Watching him make one of his paintings come alive and be able to go into one of his paintings was one of the most exciting things about this video. And you know, you just wouldn't be able to to do that without doing it CGI. So I uh, first met Adam uh, several years ago on the Schism video. Uh, we were helping him out doing some uh, visual effects for that since those, you know, obviously those videos are mostly live action and or stop motion. And then uh, and since then, become friends with Adam and we've worked on many of his videos and different print packaging and DVD packaging since then. And then uh, last year he came to us uh, talking about he wanted to do something different, a fully CG video, which is, you know, a very ambitious project, especially since Tool songs are of the longer length. Um, and uh, it was just a cool thing. It was basically trying to figure out how do we take what was normally done, you know, what you couldn't do in stop motion or live action because of the type of way the characters are designed and it's a different type of art and, you know, bringing Alex Gray's uh, art to, uh, into like the real world and, and it was a very complicated process. And that was one of the interesting things with Sidno and Adam figuring out how do we actually get the project to work? How do we design everything? How do we build the team? Because you know we're doing that much CG, it's you know it's a lot of stuff, you know, and it's a very ambitious project to take on. So what we had to do is basically break down the project in a couple different phases. From first, it was the storyboards and character designs, trying to figure out who are the like, what's the cast of characters. Uh, then we had to start figuring out what was the flow of the video. How much was the X character? How much was the Spectres? How much of the video was going to be the Alice Gray part, and then the digital freakout scene. And then from there we started cutting in Final Cut, started kind of you know bringing the, the project together uh, editorially while at the same time we were uh, building all the 3D assets for all the characters and creatures. Uh, and then from there we started also working with a concept uh, designer who was helping work with Adam to figure out like what's the look of the video. Because that's one of the hard things on a project like this is, is since it's almost pure art, we don't, you know, we're starting with nothing. You, know, you have absolutely nothing and you're trying to make something out of it so the question is at what point do you stop you know because eventually you have to kind of aim the compass somewhere and then say like this is the direction we want to go this is where we need to be and uh you know that's just that's one of the the real challenges when you're doing a long long art piece like this is you know trying to get everything focused keeping it together you know figuring out where we need to be and then you know starting to build that uh basically you know, it's kind of like building a body. You first have to start with the bones, like, you know, what's the rough edit? What's the basic concept and timing? Then you got to start building in all the organs and everything, which would be kind of like the characters, the look of things. And then you have to kind of end with, you know, basically your skin, which is the final look. What's the color correction? How's the, you know, like all the 2D post-processing that we do to try to give the, uh, the video a different type of style. Adam wanted to call me a co-director on this 
uh, film project, and I was very honored to uh, that he thinks of it that way. I, I know the majority of the film is really Adam's uh, direction here, but we did work together from, uh, well, well, really a seminal part of, of uh, getting the vicarious visuals and everything together. I'll never forget the times we spent together just like seemed like 24 hours uh, a day working on little drawings and and saying hey what do you think of this you know and then it's like wow oh, that's cool you know and then uh, and we were trying to resolve stuff about well, how do we work with the bug you know and how, what does that look like and so we were doing lots of drawings of, of that and it was really amazingly fun to work together and it was grueling it was really exciting to uh, Adam was really introducing me to the process of doing the whole storyboard and how do you create something like this? It's a very kind of uh, dream logic that I think Adam brings into his films. And he's a masterful uh, designer of mood and of, uh, you know, making the most bizarre and uh, unsettling kinds of images appear uh, natural and so uh, this is a uh, the visualization of the world that uh, that the X is uh, finds himself in is it, to me you know it, it has resonance with uh, a, a very apocalyptic uh, kind of world obviously and so Adam didn't want everything to be totally obvious uh, with this. And so it, it had to maintain its dream integrity. And I, I think that that's been a, a, a great benefit of this. It, uh, it is another dimension. It is another world. It's a world of the imagination. Um, that has been woven so skillfully by so many artists, really. The, the folks at Hydraulics have been just incredible. And uh, for us to be able to meld our views of, uh, of reality and, uh, you know, creating this X character and all the elements that it would have uh, was really, it was really exciting. So I started originally working on the video at a very early stage uh, when it was just, um, you know, storyboards. Adam kind of came to me with uh, these little thumbnail storyboards that he put together, these incredibly clear and meticulous illustrations of what he wanted, like what he visualized. Um, and I basically, my, my responsibility was to come up with uh, um, concepts that would kind of establish a visual look based off of what you know he visioned or what he had in mind. On top of the concept work, I'm also uh, working on a matte painting for the end of the music video. Uh, it's basically a realistic representation of one of Alex Gray's paintings. Of um, uh, it's like kind of like a shot of the Earth from space, looking down and it shows this um, kind of eye inside the clouds. Um, and there's kind of this, you know, swirling storm. It kind of uh, fits with the whole spiral motif. I came into the process pretty much from the beginning because uh, with something, with a, a CG project like this, it always involves kind of uh, editing something together before any of the work really gets uh, the main body of work gets done, which is planning in the planning phase. Um, in commercials, they call it an animatic, um, and typically they'll take storyboards, which have been around for years and years, and they do this for movies and uh, videos too, to basically take uh, the duration of the time that you know the program is going to be, which is the length of the song, and then time out all the storyboards uh, to that length and and just to get kind of a basic idea of, of how it's going to feel and what sort of shots are going to work next to each other and um, what are the moments that you have to hit in the song 
It was interesting with this particular video because Adam Jones um, wanted specifically not to be too constrained to the to the rhythm and uh, musical changes of the song. In fact, the first thing I did when I sat down with the, with the song and started cutting the animatic or the storyboards was that I mapped out all of the beats, which is usually the, fir the first thing that I do when I'm cutting to music. Mapped out all the beats and all the major um, sections of the song. Um, because I tend to cut very rhythmically and musically in anything that I do. And, and I showed Adam, uh, you know, so this is, I kind of made this floor plan. I'm, uh, I have, I dropped markers on the timeline wherever there's a, there's a, a beat. And he said, no, get rid of all that. That's, uh, we're not doing it like this. Just throw everything. Yeah, I sp he specifically said, uh, take everything you know about cutting a music video and throw it out because we're going to cut this like a film first and foremost, and then uh, and then we'll we'll bring the music into it, but it has to work visually first. And then, you know, there are a few points, there are a few key moments in this in the music that that have to uh, you know have to coincide with the visuals. Um, and he actually he kind of he did me the the great favor of. Uh, lending me a booklet of, of DVDs of short films and things that he that he collected over the years, um, and said, "Just go home and watch all these, and this is what I, this is what we're going for with the video." So I did, and some of them were really bizarre. This uh, this, this tool video, the reason it, uh, it took so long is that people don't understand that eight minutes of CG is actually a long, involved process. Because uh, it it, when you say like a whole full CG video, you basically have to build like everything that's there. You know, like in other vid music videos or movies and stuff like that, you get like a, at least some, some plates, like a guy that's like photographed, like a street or something like that. So that's like, half the work done. But here we'd have to build the background, the characters, and everything. Uh, so I guess from step one to like you know ten, um, thank goodness that, you know Adam Jones had these great storyboards planned out because that's like the first step. You know, planning all your shots, having all the compositions and whatnot. You got to build the guys, so the bug, X, Specter, the carbon destructor, um, the environments, the mountains, the desert. Then you got to like uh, put some marionette like rigs in them, so us animators can move the guys around. And uh, then you know, of course, we got to animate it. And that's a whole process in itself because sometimes the movement doesn't look right, and then Adam Jones has got to prove that. And then we go on to the next stage after that, which is like uh, we got our lighters and renders. We put like the final look and final touches on how. How cool, you know, the, uh, the textures of X and um, making sure all the layers of his ribs and his skin come through. And then the final, final stage is a 2D uh, composition, uh, compositing actually. And then we get, it's, it's almost like a guy who's doing like a full collage. So he takes all our elements, uh, the mountains, the, the, the elements of, of, of X, the cover structure, putting background, foreground, the clouds, um, all, the, all the minutia, and then uh, putting it all together. So, uh, you know, 30 seconds of, of this video would probably take, you know, like a, a, probably a month or two. And you just uh, com combine that for a total of like eight minutes and it just, it just becomes a very long involved process and it involves a lot of people to collaborate with each other. So I, I think that's, that's the majority of the bulk of where all the work goes for a full CG video. Um. We are, uh, we are a visual effects company. Uh, we primarily handle uh, uh, photorealistic effects for our large uh, our major motion pictures uh, for the, the whole Hollywood game. Um, but every once in a while we, uh, we dip out and get to do a kind of a fun artistic project. Uh, this is definitely one of those where it's, uh, it's not necessarily photorealistic, it's definitely a stylized looking video, but it's, it's allowed us to just kind of you know, can jump back into more of our artistic roots as opposed to uh, some more of our technical ones that we have to uh, deal with uh, currently with some of our current jobs, um, which definitely has made it a lot more fun of a project. Uh, and also a little more challenging because, you know, as opposed to, you know, trying to recreate something that you know what it looks like, we're now trying to, you know, dip into someone's psyche and trying to pull out the uh, artistic vision, um, which is at certain times very abstract but very particular. Um, one of the hardest things about making this video is that um, 
some people might look at this thing when it's all done and go, there's you know, just some random images or these guys just made some cool um, random things and strung it together. But um, the thing about both Adam and Alex is that they have very particular needs for uh, artistic wants for this video. Um, and everything in here means something to them at a certain point. So we've had to stay on a very, very tight path um, artistically. And then we had to figure out on the back end, you know, the technology, how to get it done. That, that was actually the easy part for this particular project. Um, it's been, you know, some of the parts have been very easy to understand because they're very corporeal and things we're kind of used to. And then, and then some of them are uh, very abstract in nature and, and really hard to you know, kind of put onto film because a lot of it's just thoughts, ideas, dreams. And um, that's, you know, what Alex Gray is famous for is being able to take his dreams and put it on canvas, which is, uh, it's uh, admirable and amazing at the same time because most of us can't do that. Um, so for a while in the project, one of the things I've been trying to do is just, you know, listen to them and, you know, we, we would go and just, you know, jump bulldoze through some you know, effects just looking for you know any sort of comment they love it they hate it just to kind of get the dialogue started so I think after uh, after a little while once we had enough uh, conversation and, and we sat down and uh, discussed where it is we want the video to go we, we kind of you know I, I guess finally a little light bulb went off my head and one of the main jobs I've had to do is had to you know um, translate that to the rest of the artists down here that aren't necessarily used to that kind of a circumstance and it's still going. It's like every day. It's like ah, that's close, but that's not exactly what I want. And yes, Adam and Alex are very particular, and that's fine. That's, that's totally cool. Um, we uh, they they think they're being bothersome, but it's actually nice to have you know someone trying to push the art as opposed to just putting a product on shelf. Uh, main role is being the three D coordinator is just trying to keep track of the myriad of elements that have to be made for an eight and a half, eight minute all CG music video and the scope is pretty large it's actually bigger than a lot of a lot of work uh, individual facility would get for a blockbuster film it's like 200 shots quite a bit so every little piece has to be uh, kept, kept track of who's on what who's going to be doing what fair amount of work my uh, other role of being an effects artist is making uh, dust most of the video takes place in the desert, and you have this very large uh, character, I'll call it, uh, called the Carbon Destructor. It's just a uh, three tentacle creature grinding through the desert landscape, and something that large, everything it touches just explodes and just big pyroclastic dust. And uh, that's basically uh, what I've been creating for the video. So uh, it's been a. Uh, quite a bit of work for, for myself and for a lot of other people here. And so it's, uh, it's very nice to see it uh, all come together right now. Uh, as, as animation supervisor, what I'm doing uh, basically is just uh, trying to make everything move as cool as possible. Um, anything that's got any motion at all in, in the video is kind of, you know, had a particular way that it needed to look. And um, if I wasn't working on it myself, I had a team of animators that I was kind of overseeing and um, making sure that we were all kind of had the same idea about how this thing should, how everything in the video should move. As we went through the, the way that the, the main character is moving, um, X is moving through the video, uh, we kind of we're trying to get this frailty and kind of uh, um, kind of stop motion -y feel through, through his movement and uh, just trying to figure that out because typically um, when you're working with computer animation everything is smooth and lovely and everything works in this very smooth way and we're kind of going against uh, what's normal work procedure and making this thing kind of tick and he's got this like nervous kind of shaking and in addition to that we kind of wanted to uh, add this layer of the stop motion feel throughout the video um, but at the same time kind of create a new a new thing that's both um, you know using the stop motion stop motion technique and kind of 
comparing it with the CGI stuff. Yamada Yoshio to Imas, Modera de Konkai no video de Hotondo no character, Zembu no character, Bokuga Tsukri Mashita. Maya っていうソフトを使って、えー、ベースのキャラクターを作って、えー、G ブラシというソフトで、えー、たくさんディテールをつけてい、えー、きました、えー、アダムとアレックスと一緒に、えー、いろいろ考えながらデザインもしながらやっていったのがすごい楽しくて。とてもいい経験になりました、えー、特に好きなのは、えー、ネット・オブ・ビーイングという、えー、アレックスがデザインした、えー、絵を 3D に変えるという作業はとても、えー、インタレスティングな作業でした、えー、アダムが持ってくるデザインっていうのはすごい、えー、独特の、えー、デザインで。作ってて本当に楽しかったです。Well, when I started to see the,、um, the net of being appear in the vicarious video, all the tests and various things that I was working with、uh, Yoshi to sculpt the head, that was not easy. You know, we spent days just working on getting the, the head right and then the mapping of the textures and all the rest of that. But once we got a head that could then, that was like the, a piece of the grid, and you just like multiplied that head and you created the entire net. And that was really, you know, astonishing to see that it, it works and that、uh, the kind of、uh, interconnectedness of this mesh of beings is. Really possible to visualize, and I can't wait to sculpt it. Well, the net of being, I think, is an outgrowth of a series of paintings that I've been working on that have t h i s beings made out of a grid of fire and eyes, kind of universal beings, because they have these little cosmic windows. Inside where galaxies spiral. And it occurred to me on an ayahuasca journey down in Brazil, and,、uh, which is a, basically a psychedelic tea. And I just saw an infinitely interconnected meshwork of godheads. And it seemed like Every other kind of being and thing was part of this、uh, network. And it was beautiful because the heads、uh, went right into、uh, the heads on the upper and lower levels. It was infinite、uh, expanse like this, and then it was an infinite expanse. Omnidirectionally. And because it's a network of、uh, kind of cosmic dust and consciousness, that's kind of my symbol of consciousness is the eyes and the flames, then it's infinite consciousness that encompasses the entire cosmos. That was, the, I think, the symbol that. It's pointing toward as、uh, a kind of reach for the mind. And、uh, so it still presented a huge challenge you know, to visualize. And I spent like five months trying to get my pictures to have any reference point with the vision experience that I had. But、uh, it's Come closer and closer to it. And I always imagine, you know, floating around inside of this space because、uh, it was an actual dimension. And to be able to visualize it 
uh, for Adam to have seen this, uh, you know, this world just like I did when he saw the drawing, it, and to then pull off this, you know, computer animated world of the net of being is, I'm, I'm just really honored and I'm incredibly happy that, that we can make this happen. As a Tool fan, I think that uh, uh, this video is definitely, you know, a step in a different direction, and you know that's what you expect with Tool. You know, they're always pushing the limits. They're always stepping in different directions, and they're experimenting and pushing it in every, you know, which way. And um, you know, it's it's uh, you know it's all CG. It's a totally different thing. It's not stop motion. It's you know it's not live action, but I think that's what makes you know, you know, tool, you know, what they are. You know, they they uh, they never limit limit themselves to anything specifically. And like every single time you see something new and something cool and exciting and and uh, mysterious and you know, um, you know, all together kind of like awe inspiring. Because Vicarious is such, to me, it, it's one of the toughest songs on uh, 10,000 Days, I have to say. It, you know, when I heard it, it was like certainly one of the most beautiful, but also one of the most uh, painful songs. Because it really deals with uh, something we don't necessarily want to face in ourselves, you know, which is uh, that. Uh, culturally, we, just like the Roman civilization of old, watch the death spectacle and seem to be removed from it. The real um, position there, though, is that we're obviously not disconnected from it. We are not disconnected from the world dying. And uh, the conceit of the, of the words uh, sort of plays with that, you know, that you can witness uh, the whole world dying and, as if it's not you too. And I think that the implications there, uh, as, as every tool uh, work does. None of it's totally obvious. There's a lot of uh, paradox and symbolism behind things. And so it winds up being deeply resonant, deeply disturbing. And I think that the video, it, it, the videos never try to describe or work with the songs exactly. But there is, like I said, a dream logic that this, I believe, uh, gets the point of both the tragic loss of life uh, on Earth and the, the powers of, of destruction and violence that everywhere surround us, the mesmerizing quality of the media, and uh, this world of interconnectedness that lies behind uh, the scenes as well. So I think it's an epic song. Uh, it's uh, an amazing opportunity to have worked with Adam to try and visualize uh, this, bring it to a, uh, a level of vision that can be shared with the world.